Okay. Um, so I told you about DPLL, the most elegant, sensible, reasonable for, uh, algorithm for Boolean satisfiability. Treat it just like a CSP. You simplify the formula. You do the analog of forward checking by looking for unit clauses. These are these are variables that you know are going to have to be set a certain way, so you go ahead and set them and then propagate the results by simplifying the formula. It's a, we're exploiting the, the formula um, to guide our search. So it's really a beautiful, beautiful algorithm. Here's a really stupid algorithm. It's called GSAT. So we have to find a model for the formula, right? So a model is an assignment of true and false to the variables that makes everything true. So what do we do? First, we start by randomly picking true and false for every variable, right? And now we've got, a, we've got a assignment, which is what we wanted. What are the chances that that satisfies the formula? They're like Zippo. So, okay, what do we do now? Now, we look and we say, okay, if I, if I change the value of x from true to false, does that help things or hurt things? Does it make more clauses true than are true now? What if I change y from true to false or false to true? If I flip, flip the value of y, does that make things better? What about z? If I flip z from true to false to false to true, does that make, does that help? And you look for all the variables and see which, which is the one that's going to help the most. And you change it. So now some clauses got true. That's nice. And you keep doing this. And in fact, um, it could be that there's no variable you can flip that will make things better. Ouch, that hurts. So um, if, if you can flip a variable and, uh, well, if you, if you already flipped, if the variable that you want to flip is the same one you just flipped, then you try a different one. And if, if you get to a point where there's nothing you can flip that, uh, that you haven't either already flipped or like if everything makes things worse, then you give up and, and restart with a random solution. So this algorithm has basically no chance of working whatsoever. Total stupid algorithm. You know, a freshman that didn't take an AI class could come up with an algorithm like this, right? Oh, I need to find a model. Let's just write down some random values and then just throb them until it works. Okay, so does this algorithm work at all? Well, I don't know. What? In theory, it might have some non-zero probability of working, but I would put the chance at approximately zero, um, especially compared with DPLL. DPLL is uh, a pretty reasonable algorithm. So if you give it uh, a formula over 50 variables, like that's a bunch of variables, it can solve that in just a few seconds. If you give it, now uh, the scaling behavior is a little worrisome. If you, you know, it is an NP hard problem. So as you go to 100 variables, now we're taking a few minutes. You go to 140 variables, now we're talking a few hours. So, you know, but we can do 100 variables. But if you happen to have like 500 variables, you're hosed um, with DPLL, unfortunately. And on uh, those WIMPs over in ECE, if you write down their logic designs as SAT formulas, we're talking like 100,000 variables. So DPLL, not practical. So what if we use the stupid algorithm? So this GSAT can find a model for a 100 variable formula in a few seconds. So that's pretty good. And as we scale up, we're still just a few seconds. In fact, for 500 variables, it can find one in just a little over an hour. Um, so it scales a lot better than DPLL, which totally blows my mind that this algorithm could do anything at all reasonable. It actually totally smokes DPLL. Um, now, it's still a long way from meeting the needs of those ECE folks, um, but improvements to this algorithm uh, actually have brought it Actually, there's, there's, people got so pissed about GSAT being so good that they started doing a lot of work on these DPLL-style algorithms. <laughs> well, uh, that's what they did. So there, was the, there, we, and there ended up being a kind of arms race <laughs> in the AI community where, where this is a, a kind of local search, right? Like we're doing hill climbing here by making a local move. 
um, to our complete solution, trying to improve the objective function, like how many clauses are broken, um, getting out of local minima by random restarts. So people did a ton of work at GSAT. They invented this thing called uh, Waxat and then something else called Novelty Plus. Um, and uh, these days, uh, SAT solvers can solve like a million variables. So they are totally used by, by uh, big computer-aided design companies um, all the time. And by, uh, there's a guy at MIT does uh, protocol verification using SAT solvers, um, using them to try and find counterexamples to grounded versions of the protocol. Um, so like a million variables. Like it takes, you know, uh, maybe a day, but it can solve big, big, big problems. Now what's the, the downside of the GSAT style algorithm? Dan. See the word random right here? Randomized algorithm. You could get really unlucky and every time start from a place where you can't reach the goal by hill climbing. Okay, so it's very, so it's, it's uh, well it's worse, it's worse than that. DPLL is systematic. It's a depth first search. Mm -hmm. So eventually DPLL can, saw, can traverse the, if you give it infinite time, it will traverse the entire tree. GSAT on the other hand will not. So GSAT can never tell you that a formula is not satisfiable. All it can do is say, I searched for a long time and I didn't find a model. If you put in a, a lookup table, you don't end up repeating the random state. How big is that table going to have to be? Stupidly large. Two to the number of variables. Yeah. So if I give you a clause with a million variables, it's two to the one million. Super big. Yeah. There's only one guy in the world that's ever proposed a local search-based SAT solver that is complete. Yes, 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 yes. Paper's on my web page. Uh, <laughs> but it's not a lookup table. Yeah, because that won't work because they're just super huge. Yeah. Uh, So anyway, so, so but these are the two basic SAT algorithms. So the, there are modern versions that are much more effective, but these are the two basic styles. Uh, depth for search with some kind of propagation and basically hill climbing with restarts. Um, last, so there's a, SAT, there's a SAT competition, I think pretty much every year. Um, and they have lots of different kinds of problems. Last I heard, for industry problems like circuit verification and stuff, these algorithms were better, the DPLL style algorithms, because um, the, the actual circuits and things are very highly structured and doing unit propagation and stuff is very effective. But if you're solving random problems, then the random algorithms are actually uh, superior. Lee. Yeah, so A star, what kind of problems is A star good for? What kind of problems is depth for search good for? These are good things to think about for the exam. Um, so A star is a shortest path algorithm. Tries to find the shortest path to get somewhere. Um, and it's good when you don't have a bound on the depth of the solution. But for SAT solving, we, have a, we know the variables. We're it's a propositional logic. So we've got a certain number of propositional variables. They can either be true or false, so we have a depth bound. So when you have a, a good depth bound like that, depth for search is usually the way to go. Um, plus, like I think it was Adam that was saying, we don't have a good heuristic. Now people have tried to make heuristics um, for SAT solving by seeing like what th what's the expected probability there's a solution in this subtree, stuff like that. But that's not really distance to go kind of stuff. Like we know if I've set three variables, then I kn and I have n variables, I know that the distance to go is n minus 3. <laughs> so, so the, the A star kind of algorithms, I think those are good for planning and shortest paths kind of problems. But when you have a, a fixed number of decision variables, I think that's when you want a depth first sort of a search. Yeah, good question. Very, very important. Other questions?